Hello, High Spots fans. Welcome to the Rick and Roddy Roundtable today. We've done uh, extensive uh, interviews with both Rick and Roddy, but we've never paired them up. And uh, quite an illustrious pair they are, the two most important guys from the last 25 years of wrestling. Uh, you just spent basically a week together. This is one week after WrestleMania, helping Vince McMahon uh, promote his 25th anniversary of WrestleMania. And we want to cover some of the, uh, the things that you saw last week talk about some of the issues that was raised in Mickey Rourke's movies, and then some general topical questions that I kind of want to just get your opinions on, seeing uh, what perspective each of you have, whether it be the same or, or differing from one another. And really what we want to see is just the two of you interact, because we know you're close friends. Uh, we know we, we know the history, and everybody loves both of you. So Who's misinformed? <laughs> if you spent five days with him four days ago, you wouldn't be his friend now either. <laughs> oh, wow. Actually, Michael was there. <laughs> yeah, he just avoided us two nights in a row. I'm the only one that's got the dialysis machine on a screen. Well, I admit, I cannot keep up with you, Rick. I, I'll be the first yeah, to yeah. say that. <laughs> well, first, let's talk about uh, the Hall of Fame. Do you think, do you think uh, wrestling in general... And I guess we'll talk specifically about Vince McMahon. Do they do a good enough job treating the legends with respect, uh, specifically with the use of their Hall of Fame? Um, I'll go. Ahead. Uh, I think that uh, Vince has managed to make it uh, first a, a great uh, business move uh, as far as making a lead up for his event. You know, it's like 48 hours before. A sporting event most folks decide to actually impulse buy. Um, the Hall of Fame itself uh, it, it certainly is an honor. Uh, he's made it, he is, you know, he's put it on the map, which gives us respect. I don't agree, though, uh, of all the people that might be in the Hall of Fame. Uh, I, I don't know what the definition of qualified to be in the Hall of Fame. I certainly have respect for everybody there now. But uh, it'll be interesting in the future where, where that goes because you're inducting seven and eight people at a time. Uh, I wouldn't, w as proud as I am to be part of it, I wouldn't want it watered down for the sake of great TV 24 hours before WrestleMania. My exact sentiments. My, own, my only concern is that I think it's, I'll even go more over the top than Roddy. I think it's fabulous. I've had the, uh, um, the pleasure of inducting Harley Race, Roddy, and now Ricky Steamboat in the last four years. So it uh, doesn't get any better than that for me. And I certainly feel the emotion, and I feel that it reestablishes a level of stature that we never had before as it continues to get bigger. But I, like Roddy, am concerned that we don't lower the bar. There you go. It's like the word great. <laughs> Well, the word great is passed around way too much. A superstar. Yeah. Is, is there, there's a lot of superstar I can live with great is another word. That comes that's a different <laughs> a different vocabulary. Is there any particular person that you guys maybe talked about last week and that you feel have, has been omitted from the Hall of Fame that's long overdue? No, there's, no, there are a bunch of guys that are Hall of Fame material out there, but there's a bunch of guys like Roddy said, if you're inducting seven guys a year, you know, it's not it's not an immediate not in the immediate future, I don't think. It is in the immediate future as to who's going to be the flagship player that goes in. Um, you know, as a, as an example, um, just you know, I'll say because you're sitting there. You know, they, Roddy Piper and Hogan should have never been inducted the same year. Um, you know, and because I think they thought that the induction of Rod of Hulk would be like their flagship induction, when really, because Stallone did it, who's not even a wrestler. Um, and it really didn't relate to wrestling because there was nobody talking about wrestling. It was ten seconds of really nothing. It, it was it was it wasn't even wasn't even good TV because for whatever Hulk has accomplished, he didn't get his due from a wrestler. Um, and um, I really felt like Roddy's uh, not induction and good that I did it, but it was Roddy Piper. It was me. There's chemistry. There's real real life conditions that we've gone through when things that we've done together and wrestled together and I just feel like I, like I didn't like uh, William Shatner and Justin Jerry Lawler. It was ridiculous. I mean, I, I, I get the fact they've met each other, but William Shatner had to read the speech. I mean, he knew nothing. There was nothing heartfelt about his, you know, and, and Jerry's been a, a big time player and a big star in our business. So I'm more concerned that you keep the bar with wrestlers inducting wrestlers and that the people that are being inducted 
in inducting their friends or whatever, you know, at least understand the credibility and, the, and, and what they've brought to the industry as a performer and as an individual. Is there any particular names? I'm long winded. <laughs> no, good answer. Yeah. Good Is there answer. any particular names that jump out at you that have been omitted to date? I mean, I guess eventually they'll they'll probably well, see their time. Well, they'll be there. Yeah, you know, like one right. I don't know if he is, but uh, Jack Lanza. He's in. Yeah. Uh, is he in? But they inducted him Mulligan the same year. Yeah, they it, did. It was great. Yeah, Chicago um, two years ago. Red Bastine. Red Bastine. I don't know. You know, I'll, no. but my point just being that. The, that league of great men, when Rick and I broke in, the, you know, there's there that certainly deserve to be in. Resting Hall of Fame deserve to be in it. You know, they, they, they can go backwards a long way. Well, they, did. they went and got Nick, you know, but you probably, R Roddy, you know, does a lot of stuff out in Hollywood. <laughs> but Roddy I, doesn't remember a lot. <laughs> no, no, but R Roddy's not, you know, I, I've had the luxury of being there every, every Monday night for yeah. the past eight years, I mean, up, up until last year, but. Um, you know, if you don't follow it every week, you don't see it. Like, you know, but like, um, you know, since I've been there, they brought back, uh, they brought in uh, Vern Gagne, which was great, Nick Bockwinkel, the Blackjacks. And, okay. Yeah. Um, I mean, they, they, had to, they had to make a deal with Mulligan not to beat up everybody there to get them to come <laughs> to be inducted. But, <laughs> <laughs> but it was cool. Jack is too much, you know. In Japan. Yeah. No, he just, yeah. Well, what name that? created a lot of uh, talk this past year was Coco Beware. A lot of people felt he did deserve. Some of the people felt that it was, he was below the bar that should be set. And I'm not asking you to talk specifically about Coco Beware because you know, that's debatable whether he should be a Hall of Famer or not. But uh, but do you think the, do you think some people have slid in under the bar? Um, you know, I don't want to talk about that. I don't, I don't want. I don't. We we, we we work for that company still. Roddy and I will work for the rest of our life, and I, I think that um, that I, I wouldn't I wouldn't want to demean or anybody because of my own personal opinion yeah. that things that I don't know. You know, I think that uh, as Ric Flair always does, takes a high road, and I just want to grab onto his cape like I have his entire career. <laughs> I'm in trouble. No, no, but I'm not, I'm pretty open about what I think and about people, and I, you know, I just uh, the word. It, it, the, the the Hall of Fame with Roger Roddy just you know alluded to making sure that the, the company we keep is of the, is of that level and not everybody's ever going to always be the same but there is a standard there should be a marker where you know have to be here or there um, but um, there, there are some people they've inducted that I'm not don't think are Hall of Fame guys but they also have inducted some Hall of Fame guys so I you know, you know in the fight we could sit here and pick it apart. I just think going forward, and I can't stress this enough, they're going to have a hard time finding a marquee guy every year. Just hypothetically say next year it's Shawn Michaels. If it's not Shawn Michaels, who's their marquee guy next year? Mm -hmm. Year after that, it'll be The Undertaker, you know? So, I mean, while you're seeing these guys, I know Shawn is very emotional about it, and Shawn, you know, has got the luxury of being financially in a position to retire. He's, to me, he's way too young to retire, but he's got, you know, he's got a back issue, he's got a knee issue, and... You know, he just can't keep doing that to himself. He won't be able to enjoy the quality of life with his kids. And that's the decision he has to make. And also, Sean really enjoys the emotion of the moment of seeing these guys walk into the Hall of Fame because they've made it really cool the last couple of years. I mean, it really is. It's, without a doubt. Yeah. You know, without a doubt. Oh, it's a first-class event. I was yeah. blown away by yeah. how much time and, and, and effort yeah, goes and, into it. And the fact and the people there, I mean, it could be... I know it ran too long last year because they let me talk forever, but it is... In the rock talk all night, but the people don't—they're no hurry to go home. They want to hear, they want to see it. You know, this year I understand TV for TV. They made it shorter, but Steve Austin could have talked for another hour. I certainly would have had a lot to. And I like Steve. I could listen to, you know, who can't listen, listen to Dusty Rhodes talk or Michael Hayes. I mean, you know. Some other Hall of Fames they actually allow people who are already inducted to have more of a say in who gets in the Hall of Fame <sighs> through a voting process. I, and Rick, I know you were. Uh, you, were, you probably knew in advance some of the guys they were talking about into going in this year, but do they ever lean on you and ask what your opinions are? In they, terms they, don't of ask, they don't ask talent, period. No. Do you think that should be part of the process? Um, it, it is in the one in Amsterdam. Well, yeah, you put in the one, one in New York and New York St. Louis, I guess. I, I'm just saying, I'm telling you with the WWE that the boys aren't, aren't no. involved in, the, in that equation. 
No, I was just, and I, I'm yeah. sorry, I, what I was saying is yeah. that might not be such a bad idea yeah. Yeah. for the one that we were just speaking of. That might be a way yeah. of... Uh, the problem is it's just hard to get the guys on the pa same page right. and get them together. And you know what? Legends aren't made overnight. <laughs> you know, it's like, I don't, I don't even know what the definition of a legend is, to be quite honest with you. But I know it takes a lot of hard, hard work and heartbreak. And so, you know, I don't want that word thrown around too loosely. You know, uh, a lot of guys sure gave a lot. One of the things that I know that you've been in mainstream media with has been uh, connected to The Wrestler, the Mickey Rourke's movie. And I know you've talked a lot about what you thought of the movie per se, but I'm more interested in talking about some of the topics that the movie raised itself, some of the topics that Vince McMahon used to promote the match that you guys were involved in with this past WrestleMania. Um, but first I was saying, what, and I know that you probably answered this a hundred other times, just do it for a hundred and one, is what, what did you guys think of, of the movie itself? I thought that uh, Mickey Rourke did a phenomenal job. I thought it, it could have been better written. And I thought that whoever they got their information from was halfway with it and halfway not with it. But once again, Mickey acted out a part. He didn't write the script. And Roddy, being a professional actor, knows that he gets handed the script. He doesn't have the luxury of calling the director and the writer aside and saying, guys, or if you do, I'm not aware of it. No. Well, I want this rewritten like this. And, and Mickey wouldn't know what to rewrite because he doesn't know that. Uh, there was some, some stuff that was on the money, but for the most part, it could have been, and this, I'm, I'm sitting there saying this because I, I never have been on that side of it yet, not saying I won't end up there, but <laughs> <laughs> right now, but from what I know of it, it could have been a lot worse <laughs> because it wasn't that bad. I mean, you know, if I was, the thing that nobody t touched on on that, and I get the thing with the, with the girl, Melissa Torme, is that her name? Mm -hmm. But the heartbreak that establishes the distance in those relationships with father, daughter, father, son, the missing, they never had the mother there. The mother who torments both people. <laughs> yeah, I mean, let me just explain that to you. That's, that was the main equation missing. Rick, that's your movie. They never had the mother, yeah. They never had the mother there that creates all the animosity <laughs> between the daughter and the father while she's over at South Park shopping. <laughs> yeah, okay, I mean, or wherever, you know, the uh, Galleria. Excuse me. Um, so God. that was a key ingredient, okay? <laughs> Number two, which really uh, threw me off, which I think Roddy will agree with too, they I, they established who this guy was, the Ram, through a m montage of posters. And I, I guess that was because of the budget. I mean, I would just would have, you would think they'd rent the marquee at Madison Square Garden and put the, the, the Ram and show that, and then you could have shot it from 100 miles away, but showed this guy in front of 20,000. They never, they went from, it started in a high school gym and ended up in high school. They never showed how big the guy was um, to really get, I mean, the guy needed to be pulling up in a limousine 20 years earlier with five girls before he was driving up to his trailer, right? right. So that probably, that's, they're probably leaving that for me. So <laughs> when they write my life story, because oh, I will have gone from several big houses and several limousines I, to I a trailer. Know, I don't know if they have that. And if I ever live with a trailer, it'll be a damn nice one. <laughs> I wouldn't have to knock on the door to get in. I have one of the buttons that'll open up like that. Want to bum a key? <laughs> More speed, Scotty. We need warp speed. And just so you know, if I'm ever living in a trailer, I'm just gonna drive right off the end of a cliff and say goodbye. And say, yeah, we're at, just, uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, you uh, <laughs> Never say never. I've learned to never say never. Uh, never again. Yeah. Hey, Roddy, I was going to ask you And he was only married once, they said. How can you be a wrestler? You got to be married. He's the only guy I know that's been married one time. <laughs> I'm working on it, though. <laughs> no, no, no. No, no, no. You're right. You're in good hands. Yeah, He's got yeah. a wonderful wife. Thank you. God. Yeah. Was there any part of the film that just didn't feel, I mean, feel accurate as being a wrestler? You just looked at it and said, you know, that's just not right. That they did, they did a poor job with it. or um, I, You know, if you wanted to capture that... Uh, the wrestler as the independent circuit of today is one way. Uh, when I first and Rick first broke in, um, if you wanted to make that analogy when we were first breaking in and talk about the people that were on top then, uh, you know, 
as coming back from the ring, uh, when Rick and I were re being raised, uh, nobody clapped for your match, the old timers, or something like that. Uh, they were jealous that you were on top so, so young. And how do you stay a professional wrestler, main eventer, for 25 years in, in, in the entertainment, sports entertainment business? Well, there's a lot back there where you would see the Ram come back and everybody, hey, how you doing? And there was, there's com camaraderie and, you know, I, I've had, sheesh, I've been messing, I have so many, I got one friend. <laughs> the only guy that would show up on camera with me. <laughs> Usually I gotta do voices. And uh, so in the independent circuit now, that, uh, you know, they made a big thing about the drugs. Uh, you know, I, I, I haven't seen that style. Uh, but then again, I haven't surfed that turf so much. Uh, so what I'm saying is the camaraderie that was shown um, isn't accurate to the point of business. Who's going to be the main event tomorrow night? And you, there's a whole other side to being in the ring and the lights and the glamour and the glitz. And then there's the other ugly, ugly side that's never seen, which is uh, a shoot. <laughs> and you know, how, do you, how can you be 167 pounds, 15 years old, and make it in a business like of giants? So it, it only portrayed one at very well one aspect of current, what I call current independent wrestling, but it didn't give you a full picture. And so people in watching it, it could take it, you know, could take it as a, a bunch of, I don't know what the, you know, cobblers. Uh, I did hear a rumor that the kid that uh, was doing that steroid thing actually got busted <laughs> yeah, he, for doing, for selling actually, steroids. Yeah, he actually got busted. For yeah, that, so. so I must question, you know, it's me. <laughs> I can't help myself. You're kidding me, the guy in the movie? No, yeah, you know, with the gun, so he says, here's, I don't know what the names of this stuff are, but, you know, here's the Dama Dama and the Boom Zimba and this one, and I got a couple of these, and I know you're good for it. The thousand will be fine. Tell them, tell your wife, come visit me and bring me the two tomorrow, you know? Show me your guns. So two weeks later, the FBI comes in, <laughs> take a cup. Never mind. <laughs> Is that true? Yeah. Oh, so that. That, you see, there's no wrestlers that stupid. That's like, you know this guy. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> well, just <laughs> okay. I the, sidebar, sidebar. <laughs> roll with me. Would you? Just okay, roll yeah. with me. Thank you. Okay. But I just in that one vein. I was, I was going there. Was, there's this guy that has stole forty billion dollars from the stock market. It's Madoff, uh, right? Okay. Yeah. You won't find one wrestler. How, that will allow a man to come up to him and say, hey, can I borrow five bucks? He says, what's your name? Madoff. <laughs> you made off. <laughs> you, you geek, you. So, you know, I, I got a challenge. You know, we're, we're pretty street smart, Madoff. Yeah, he was 40 million, uh, billion. But, uh, you know, I challenge you the, the, the choices, the character choices one might have made on that show, too, you know. Huh. You mean the, the, the supporting cast in that? Yeah, the supporting yeah. cast, and there was such a lovey dovey, and yeah. you know, man. It's... Yeah, it's not like that, really. No, no. But you know. I think what they're going to, Roddy, is that is like um, they're talking about post your, your real career. And um, <laughs> I've done a lot of these shows, not a lot, but I've probably done 10 shows with my son, as you know, Michael. and. Uh, you know, I, it is sad seeing some of the guys that I wrestled with, you know, in the 80s and that, doing this and not doing well in life. But, Kills you, man. Yeah, I mean, it, 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 but I don't ever look at it as being, I don't look at it as being demeaning to them. I look at it because I know that they've made bad choices just as I've made bad choices, you know what I mean? Uh, it doesn't diminish who they were. Uh, it just, you feel, you're sensitive to where they are right now, not who they are, where they are. Unless they're continuing to make bad choices, which are, you know, things that they, you know, sometimes aren't avoidable. But it doesn't diminish who they were, you know what I mean? Because uh, there are certainly some guys out there, and I won't use any names, that have really made the world, made, made us look really bad in terms of uh, yeah. post-wrestling careers. Um, and the thing, and the guys that I'm really upset with the most are the guys that jump 
on these periodic waves of media when something you know turns yeah. the, turns us upside down. Yeah, like yeah. the like the warrior. Yeah. <laughs> well, the and, well when, when the Benoit tragedy happened, you know, everybody that's never been anybody. That's a really good point. Yeah. Everybody that's never been anybody jumped on that bandwagon. One of the topics I wanted to talk about that was raised in the movie is um, he's still going and wrestling despite being well, well past his prime. It's How hard is it to leave pro wrestling being you were so good at it, uh, you did so well with it, and, and you really... It's, it's hard to ever imagine doing as well in something else as you did in wrestling. It's amazing how, how you were very, at the very top of your game in wrestling and you do it again in another industry is almost impossible. Mickey Rourke's character, he, he had a hard time leaving the sport of wrestling. Do you, did you relate at all to that? Is it he just didn't have a choice. Mm -hmm. He didn't have a trade. He was like a, a, a lot of us is, you know, you get into pro wrestling. Uh, I got in very young. Rick Rick, I wasn't much older than I was. Um, you know, I was the only one in the AWA in back in the day that Ric Flair beat. <laughs> he got beat by everybody. I'm the only one he ever beat in the AWA. Yeah, and, and yeah. I want I know what while we're fresh at it, let me just say something. Roddy left wrestling at the height of his career, not because he had to, but because he had an opportunity, had a vision to do something else, and he's been really successful at it. Roddy, you like to play this down and joke about this, but Roddy Piper is a very wealthy man. For me, and I'm answering this because it's fresh on my mind, if I'd made better business choices, I wouldn't be sitting here, Michael. <laughs> so it is. I've made some really bad business choices, and that's not because I did things stupid, because I trusted people. And, and, and trust is not you, stupidity. But, but you, know, so, you know what, though, Rick? Yeah. I got it. I got it. No, just, no, no. I'm I'm sorry, sorry. I just want to finish the thought is that neither one of us, neither one of us left wrestling, and myself included, with any negative thoughts. I love wrestling. I could wrestle tomorrow. You know, I, could, I feel great. I've got a gift of health that God gave me. Um, but I, I'm hungry to be successful at something else without thinking about wrestling. Roddy's already made it. I mean, Roddy's made you know, 100 movies or whatever it is, and he's done well. He would, he, he, he took, he, he went to another level and something else he wanted to do, and he took it there and he's made it, you know. But Roddy so just, Ric Flair, you, huh? know, you know something? Well, I'm gonna make I it too, but I mean, I, I, I had it made and I let it go, you know, through divorce and bad choices with women, just one bad woman, not the other two were very nice. Um, and, but it's not cost effective when you're not, when you're not working to pay $20,000 a month in alimony. But, you so, know, it's interesting, Rick, though, because after 25, being a, you, you know, 25 at WrestleMania 25, and you, you've done everything in every league, you saw it, yeah. is, you know, it's almost like, dude, you have so much to offer in, like, um, motivational speaking for a makeup, Coca-Cola, NASCAR, or any of those. You have no, so I, much well, I to offer. Like when I'm just saying so I, that's I don't, the I don't miss wrestling. I, that's what I'm saying. I don't miss... He asked us if we miss the wrestling. The answer is we miss... We miss what we were really good at, but I don't dwell on it at all. He doesn't either. I mean, Roddy's been in Hollywood for 20 years. I mean, Roddy's made movies, rubbed shoulders different people. I mean, he's even, and he's, you know, been with some women that I wanted to be with because <laughs> theater allowed it. Theater allowed it. Or I'm a thespian. It. I'm a lesbian. <laughs> for, I, you know, I bowl. I, yeah. No, but I mean, to answer your question, we both like wrestling and we respect the guys and what Roddy's had a chance to do, which I told him one time a couple years ago in Greensboro, is now he's back in the locker room on a little more regular basis and sees how great the guys are. Which when you walk away for a while and you lose contact with your generation, that it gets yeah. a little strange, you know? It's hard. But, but now it's, you know, those guys, those guys in the bar love watching me and Roddy walk in. They go, here they come. <laughs> you know, and Roddy goes, oh, 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 oh. <laughs> And I go, woo, woo, come on, right here. Cause I, I, do, I take one vodka time like this, right? And I just stir it like this, like this. And I go, you know, right, he's going, I have to go. So I go, I go, I go, like, okay, I'll have one. <laughs> so, and some, Roddy and Roddy start telling stories, and the young guys are gathered around, and someone starts talking while he's interrupting. Roddy takes a strong, goes, like a blowgun. Hey. Yeah, I I'm didn't talking. Do that. <laughs> yeah, he blew paper out three times. <laughs> <laughs> like, 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 like over in Africa, <laughs> like a deer is gonna fall. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, I mean we, we're we're in a good place. But the answer is we do love wrestling and we miss it. But we don't. We both realize who we are. Thank God. 
we're one week away, one week after the the uh, WrestleMania appearance with Chris Jericho. Do, and Rick, just because I because I, I I get a lot of information from you, this was a couple of months in the planning. Did did everything happen with Chris Jericho the way you envisioned it happening? Did did the whole storyline and uh, come together the way that you wanted it to? Were you happy with the end product? Yeah, I mean, you know, it's it, you know the thing of it is, and this is where Roddy and I. You know, we we agree, we disagree a little bit, but this is, you know, where Roddy's um, and I differ sometimes. I have come to realize, because I've been doing it much longer than he has, they ain't never going to hurt Ric Flair. Took me a long time to figure that out. They're never going to hurt Roddy Piper. So did we weren't crazy about the finish of that match at all. But at the end of the day, no one remembers. They remember the match. We were part of an illustrious, huge venue. We were on TV in major marquee areas. And, you know, we, we go over sometimes we get old school and start talking about that, 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 that. But, but at the end of the day, it was cool. Yeah. I mean, I don't personally think it makes sense for the three of us to get our ass kicked and then Mickey Rourke to knock them all one punch. But I also understand sports entertainment. I understand that it get a lot of extra PR for the company and all that. And, at the end of the day, I mean, this is what it, I mean, Roddy knows more, you know, more of the prestige of rubbing shoulders with the guys out there than I do. But it's not a bad rub with be with Mickey. I think Mickey has launched himself on a new gig. Yeah, he's been, you know, he won the Golden Globes. He, yeah. uh, you know, he's up for an Oscar, and uh, you know, almost got there. Um, and for the company, from a company yeah. standpoint of view, it's better to. Rub shoulders with the guy who just almost won the Oscar, and Sean Penn goes, "Nice to have you back, Mickey." You know when Sean Penn wins the Oscar, uh, it's good business from their standpoint of view. From a purist, you know it's like with Mr. T and Mr. Maven in the beginning. Mm -hmm. I always taught the rule: you got somebody outside our business coming into our business for something and then leaving. Well, huh, I'm sorry, I'm gonna be pretty hard to do business with if you think you're just gonna come and beat me up and boom and then hop back to tea country and, and laugh at us and say what a fool I am. You know, it doesn't work like that. And when Mr. T wanted to come in, uh, he wanted to come in and bang heads and hit and you know, it ain't happening. Um, so you always, my point is, when somebody comes from outside our industry into our industry, it's a very, very fine line where you need to keep them. So at the end of the day, we're all as healthy or healthier than we were when we began. Yeah, but in this case, too, Roddy and I just came in and went wham, bam, thank you, ma'am, and got made a lot of money, and we're leaving, too. So it's a little different for us, too. We were there making Raw on Monday. We might have a little different thought process. Yeah, I suppose. <laughs> Trying to explain our 30 minute, our thirty second demise, personally, each one of us, <laughs> boom, boom, boom. <laughs> it's gonna I haven't be beat that fast in a long time. No, no They thought sir. Bradshaw got beat fast. I got beat faster than Bradshaw. <laughs> <laughs> and I had my street clothes on. I never, I never got myself, I never got myself warmed up. I never got my Ooh. fighting gear on. <laughs> no, but it's true, it was I don't it mind getting beat, but let me have my robe on and everything. I didn't like it. Yeah. I didn't like it. I didn't like that. I know how you knew when I knew it was when I knew that it was okay with you. When I walked into the after party and he would just text me, "Where are you? It's Roddy." <laughs> <laughs> he told me that everything was fine. He wasn't upstairs. He was down there, all tricked out in his black shirt, fever, ready to go. You know, my arm. I showed you my arm. No. <laughs> you know, I thought you did it on purpose. I thought that was Dory Funk. Where I go, I go, Byron, really trying to steal the show. I did. <laughs> Look at my arm, man. Oh, my God. Oh, oh, I told oh. you. I told you. Her? <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Sensitivity there. <laughs> I got my arm in there, and the rough rear, I'm going, get my arm out! Get my arm out! Jer Jericho, I, I, stay down, stay down. I was, all, I was the hardest. He voted to try to steal the show. He just said, Dory Funk Jr. bump. But with his arm, not his foot. <laughs> you know, those, <laughs> <laughs> those ropes are just a wee bit tight. I didn't know they tightened them like that anymore. <laughs> I, got, I went around there and put that arm. I couldn't get it out. <laughs> I mean, it was pulling out of the... <laughs> Oh, the dead rotator. <laughs> you didn't laugh, did you? No, 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 no. not at all. No. I, I said, he's really trying to steal his own. I was going to get down and start fighting yeah. 
with one hand. He, he, he really doesn't want to get beat today. <laughs> you, know, I, 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 you know what? I, I figured I'd have a go down here. We just go I, like this. Just. <laughs> I held back no guns. I drop kicked him. I almost broke his ankle. I saw that. I know. <laughs> well, that was a oh thing of God. beauty. That was it, a thing of beauty. Much as much commotion as I created on the outside of the ring, I couldn't come with that drop kick. I mean, I was throwing my coat in there, shaking my go, woo, woo. They still thought of drop kick. Go, I can only do so much. I got... He looks at me and goes, huh? <laughs> yeah. But the mind was there, and That's I could see the feet in the air. It's but what you envision the company. That's all that matters. That's all that matters. <laughs> man. That's the best you know, it's, it's, the you know, it's my line. won't tell it like I want. <laughs> <laughs> and, oh, yeah, uh, was but I sunset flip him. I didn't I, break my neck. Now you time. were great. You know? Yeah. Well, I don't know. Your sunset that. lip is almost as bad as mine. Mine's non existent. <laughs> <laughs> I take him, I don't give him. <laughs> yeah, uh, you know, doll. Yeah, uh. As much as I didn't like it, and I still don't like it. Holy shit, huh? We had a good time. Very great. Doesn't get us out of Super rings. Does, 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 it, does it help when a guy like Mickey Rourke, and you, you know how much of respect he has? No, he's awesome. Like, he's, I, it we, it we could it. be easier with celebrities that just get shuttled in and yeah. out, and they don't have the same level of respect. Yeah, but I'm finding that out more and more because, it, you know, like I said, I was out of it for a while, too. It seemed like I was working for WCW, that's being out of it. Um, I never really understood the whole thing and with what Vince and you know with Roddy and Cindy Lauper and all that. I mean, it's just it's continued to grow. Ninety-nine percent of the guys that are taking part uh, from the outside world in our shows are huge fans. Snoop Dogg last year was going, "Nate, you were bling for bling with bling." Come on in my trailer, man. Snoop, I can't. I can't breathe in here. Come on in, please. <laughs> hey, put the nature boy here. <laughs> <laughs> my, of course, my son Reed goes, Dad, can I stay away from the matches? I go, no. <laughs> get, get so you were bling, we're bling with bling, nature boy. <laughs> uh, I can see him saying that. Oh, too much, guys. You know, they, they, I was oh, in great. Chicago, and I was doing this show at Broad Street, and it was a rap, I was a rap thing, yeah. it was a radio show. I was supposed to go an hour. So they bring in all of a sudden these two scantily clad girls and this black fella in a fur coat. Man cow. You're doing, right? In man cow yeah, I was doing. Yeah. That's right. So this yeah. black guy in a fur coat. So, you know, I figured they're supposed to say something yeah. and they're they're lacking. And yeah. I'm going, well man, I might as well pick up the pace. And so I thought they were rappers. I yeah. didn't know. So I went over and I said, Listen, you know, I'm not a big fan of rapping and stuff on the radio. I said, But you know, you guys did it was after nine one. You guys held that and I give him a big hug and I said, God bless you. His name is called Don the One. He's one of the head of the black mob. <laughs> yeah. And so uh, uh, so they have the every year on HBO they have the the pimp of the year award yeah. or whatever. So now they take me in limousine down and I, I'm the only thing white <laughs> in the room. And so, you know, they're having trouble and Don the One says, who gave me his card. He says, is there any wrestlers in the house that can clean this up? <laughs> No. <laughs> and the next thing I saw now, here's all these gals and stuff, and, and I don't know what's going on, of course. It's oh, me. It's no, no. And there's, uh, there's the HBO cameras. Get me out of here now. And so then four black gentlemen, I thought there was something wrong because they had canes until they undone them and they come swords. And they took me to my limo and I went and saw you. <laughs> said, hey, I know where there's a hell of a party. The limo will take you back. <laughs> hey, I don't know how I got there, but... Uh, that's okay. Man, that was crazy. Yeah. He, that show was wacko. Yeah. What do you... When guys ask you about your opinion of, like, the current crop of WWE superstars... Can I go a little off topic there, sir? Absolutely. Abs thank you. I apologize. <laughs> The, the, the current crop of W. How do you how do you look at them? Do you do you look at them as uh, like more talented than than maybe your your peers back in the in the mid eighties when, when you were in your prime? Or no. Do you, do you no, look? Gosh, heck no. 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 More talented? Yeah. You know, gosh, in, the, in the eighties there was an abundance of talent. There have been periods of time like in the nineties that, but I mean, they have a lot of great talent at WWE right now. But there was a lot of great talent. In depth, and in, in between WWE, between WWE and uh, NWA, around uh, Starcade. Yeah, I mean, at that in the '80s, both companies flourished with talent. Really, a lot of depth on the chart. Yeah. The problem with WWE now, and it's not a problem, is that they, you know, are manufacturing, you know, what now, now six hours of TV a week with WGN. 
you know, Raw two hours, SmackDown two hours, ECW an hour, now WGN, is that they're having to, you know, they're having to figure out how to keep an accelerated, an accelerated um, roster. I mean, of development and developing new talent. That's why they, I think they have put so much time and thought into these second generation guys, which is really a, a cool idea. Um, but I think there's a lot of talent with WWE right now. Do you think but that's certainly hard? not any more than it was in the '80s? So. Do you, do you think it's harder now to create the marquee matchups? Like, you know, you had, when you had Starcade or mm -hmm. WrestleMania 1, you had those marquee matchups that the matchups alone were enough to sell the pay per views. And it seems like. Especially my first, first, it's very hard for them. I mean, they, they had two, two matches this year that were kind of, or matches that have, you know, that have taken place before. You know, they've made it a different temple with the, not a different temple, but a different. Uh, Oh, what was the word I'm looking for? I mean, it, but so I mean, it's recycling something they've done. Yeah, in the past. But I mean, because Hunter had wrestled Randy, you know, and, um, but they made the theme a little different. But I mean, that's that wasn't a brand new match, and John Cena, of course, wrestling the Edge is not a new match. Um, but a lot of that was a result of Dave Batista getting hurt. I mean, the roster, I think, it was going to change. Sean and Undertaker, which is really hard to believe, only wrestled one other time in their life. Yeah, it's unbelievable. Which is unbelievable. So. But uh, yeah, you're right. It becomes harder and harder to create that marquee matchup be it, because they have the same five or six guys that are the marquee players. You know, it's interesting. Uh, you're talking about the difference of talent back uh, there. Just when you said that, uh, you got these guys. All they're all great, but that have had these matches before, and they bring them to WrestleMania, uh, as opposed to two guys that went in there with a concept. Mm -hmm. And started in what was the greatest match on 25 was Michaels and the Undertaker, and they had only wrestled one time compared to I'm just making yeah. numbers up, yeah. maybe yeah. somebody ten times, which is <laughs> good for those kids still uh, those kids, yeah, they they still have somewhat of old time psychology, and uh, it's just an interesting difference as, as we talk here that was brought up. You know, do you think that practice doesn't make perfect? <laughs> and a lot of people talk about you know the experience that Undertaker. And Undertaker and Michaels have all the matches and the years they have under their belt being able to pull off a match like that Do you do you think that the young guys now that maybe aren't at that level? They, they can learn and become become that good. Do you have the faith in o who only, you see only a select few only a select few Because that, that's like saying that they're gonna be one of the top five guys in the business mm -hmm. I mean if you, if you look at the, the roster right now if you take Sean Undertaker Hunter Randy Orton John Cena Edge Big Show, um, did I say Batista? Okay, we'll start again. Undertaker, Sean, Triple H, Batista, Orton, um, Cena, Edge, I mean, everything else underneath that one, I hope I haven't missed a name, if I have, they don't know it, it's not maliciously. Um, everybody else is way down after that. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're building, and they're giving guys the rub and all that, but. I mean, Randy can walk around with with uh, um, Teddy and uh, um, Cody. Co Cody for another two years, they're not going to be in the main event of a, of WrestleMania. I mean, but it does. That's not. It's, that's, they're not expected to be. Right. It takes maturity. It takes you know more than two or three years. I mean, if you look at it, John Cena, Randy, and Dave Bautista have turned up so much in the last four years. I mean, those guys came a long way. They just Evolution was just four or five years ago. They, they had just started working. Now they're all main event guys at every level of pay-per-view. But once again, that took a long time. I mean, I, like I said to Roddy the other day, if, if, if hypothetically Sean retired next year, you know, if that happens, which I hope it doesn't because I enjoy seeing him wrestle, but if he elects to go home, next year Undertaker retires, tell their two big names that they go off the roster. I mean, it is what it is. You know, the, 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 there's nobody in that roster right now that's going to replace those names. I, I mean, on the, on the undercard roster you're making reference right. to. No one's going to show up tomorrow and be the Undertaker. That That's 22 <clears throat> years, and however long he's been doing that in the making, 20 it's years. Time in the ring. Yeah, time in the ring. And and he's got that down, and it's the music. But but most of all, it's his he's the talent. Yeah. The persona's unbelievable. But Shawn Michaels, I mean, that's another 18, 20-year guy. You don't make that overnight. What, one of the matches that also failed to live up to the expectations, and I don't think it was a terrible match, but the, the Triple H-Randy uh, Orton match, a lot of people were disappointed with it. Uh, 
I don't even know how much of it you got to watch. But I watched all of it. But but I remember we had this discussion. I think the day of the show and, and definitely before the show that. And if you don't want to talk about this, you know we'll cut it. But you felt like the the direction of the the storyline was misplaced because they didn't put any emphasis on the belt. Well, no, I said we've got two championship matches on the card, and the emphasis isn't really on the belt in either one of them. You know, the emphasis was more between Vicky Guerrero, Big Show, and John Cena, and it, you know, which is entertaining. But you're fighting for the world championship, and the emphasis was more personal between. Hunter and Randy because of the Stephanie, Shane, and the, you know Vince, the whole, the whole production of the of the angle. But I mean the title wasn't even mentioned. I mean that's just my personal. I mean I like world championship matches when the title means a lot. That just doesn't take away from it. I the the thing with that is it's just you know it's when you when you were when you were as, in, as intense as they were, you break into the house, you smash guy, boom, you know, it's kind of like. I really thought that when you were putting that together, if he picks up a monitor, right, gonna smash him over the head. I mean, they haven't talked about the belt anyway. Does he care? You know, just think about that. Now, he's already tried to kill him. He's hit him with a sledgehammer later on in the match, right? Why does he care? They, Jericho didn't care what hit me with a monitor. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah. For, for Hunter to go like this, the referee goes, no, you're gonna get beat or get disqualified. Well, the belt hasn't been mentioned in three months anyway. I mean, that, that's what I think about when you think about construction. And the guy goes, oh, my God, you can lose the title. I can't do that. The fans weren't thinking like that. The, you know, they expect you to see blood, sweat. I mean, you, know, you give them all this, you know, and even though that company's got a lot of reasons for changing that around, you know, for advertising reasons, which makes a lot of sense. You know, as old school as I am, I, I totally understand where they're going with that. Um, but it's when you sell violence, they want violence, you know, and it was it's was hard to it's hard to put that together. It, it wasn't from lack of work rate; they worked their ass off. Mechanically, they had a great match. The fans just wanted something more violent mm -hmm. because of the way it's been built. No, I, absolutely. I, I mean, got last you've had Hunter handcuffed and you know beat up his wife three times. Why would he care about hitting him over the head with a monitor and losing the title? You know, he wants to kill the guy. That's what they sold. They sold. I want to kill this guy. What would it take for someone to compete with Vince McMahon today? Four hundred and fifty million dollars. You think it's just about money? Do you I think? heard that figure. Um, I I heard that about two months ago because I know that Rupert Murdoch. Everybody's trying to get Murdoch to get involved, and the startup costs. The, and I I heard that from someone. I don't use his name. That probably understands the industry a lot better than I do. Would be about four hundred and fifty million. To open the doors and try and compete. I mean, across across the board, not just start making TV. I'm talking about to compete across the board internationally to put together a talent roster, which they couldn't do anyway. I mean, but but even if, even if Rupert Murdoch got into it, do you do you think anyone can honestly? No, no, I don't think anybody could. But I, I think it meant money wise, what would it cost? There's nobody out there to compete with Vince. And then the experience of production of that particular industry, the how are you going to catch up there? You know, you can get great people from NBC that can, but, but the way you can't fault the production of the WWE and the number with Kevin Dunn there uh, watching over the Vince Trust, the the number of years they have at putting things together so fast, the largest traveling show in the world, four hundred fifty million dollars, and then you start to learn how. You know, I don't know, man. Uh, no, no, I, I just meant. They were asking me money. Well, I heard that figure. That seems like a lot, but I I, I can believe that. I guess. Well, you know, to, to buy all that equipment to compete, yeah. I'm sure. It, it's yeah, and then open cool. up offices around the world and staff them. And does it bother you in a little way? I mean, the two of you grew up in a in a time where there was territories and you could learn your trade from the bottom up. Does it bother you just a little bit to know that wrestling will never? Never change like that, and we're probably we've probably seen the system that's going to exist for the end of time. Doesn't bother me at all. Not at all. No, I, I actually the, the the territories were overrated. The territories were good for a handful of guys. For a lot of other guys, the territories sure, were hard. Sure, weeded out a lot of guys. Yeah, huh? Sure, weeded out a lot of people. It did. I mean, but if you weren't making a, if you weren't working on top of the territory, you were starving. So the territories were great for guys like me and Roddy. I mean, don't misunderstand me. Mm -hmm. um, 
you know, we learned our craft, of course, by working every night. That's the difference. But the, it, it was a really a hard way to make a living, guys. It was. I mean, we, Roddy and I started sure. out making nothing. Um, then you had me, I come here to Charlotte, North Carolina with him, and so he's got me at Franco's in, uh, in <laughs> Richmond buying thousand dollars suits and camel hairs and these suits. So one time I'm in TV and one of the fans said, and I put this in, they lived the movie. This is where I got it from. The fan says, and I got, he says, Piper, all those new clothes you got on, it's like putting perfume on a pig. <laughs> he said, How do I look, Rick? How do I look? Oh, you look great. You well, look I didn't great. know you were, I didn't want to show when you were going to be a cowboy star or a rock star, singer. You, you, go, you got to get rid of the car. I knew, I knew he had to kill, but I wasn't sure where he was going to, <laughs> with his lifestyle. Just trying to help him out a little bit. Valentine oh. spent about 100 grand there, too. Oh, <laughs> my goodness gracious. Ric Flair, Ric Flair, Ric Flair. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, finally you know, got me that. And it's a question that now that Reed is going through the process of trying to, to uh, you know, work on his craft, uh, he doesn't have the same benefits of working with the different territories and learning it. What what do you think is the best way for someone like a Reed or, or the thousands of other guys you've met over the last couple of months doing these shows to learn their craft and, and get to the point where you're useful to Vincent Man? Well, here's the deal. I've, I've, I haven't even told Jake this, but... Because my schedule has been so with WrestleMania and all this stuff going on with NASCAR, but I I told Johnny Ace this the other day, and I believe this: uh, Reed being able to train with Jake and Charlie, okay? I mean, I'm just throwing them in a class of their own, right here, and start having matches with them. It's going to start happening twice a week, come hell or high water, because I don't have to go anywhere Tuesday and Thursday anymore. He learned more, and these guys got in shape. And if you haven't seen by watching WrestleMania, the importance of the conditioning and getting up and down real fast, that stuff we practice. I mean, you know, it's like tonight, I'm gonna tell George, I'm gonna, I'm gonna lay out that match and I'm not going down to these, I'm not going to these towns anymore to watch the guys, you know, not work the way they should be, what work to their capability. Does that make sense? We can learn more wrestling you and Charlie every day. You know what I'm saying? Because I wrestle the same guy every day. He, if, if, you go back to the territories. I wrestle the same guy every day sometimes for three months. You know what I mean? That's how you learn. But it's it's in the ring. It's not just working. It's in the ring. It's time. It's time. time and, in the and ring. That's why the condition, that's why I tell you guys, up and down, up and down. So if you have to do it, you have to do it. If you don't have to, you don't have to. The other thing is you got to get comfortable <laughs> yeah. in the ring. So because it's not until you become comfortable and warmed up do you start doing your best work where you start improv and things coming and... And the only way you get that is time in the ring. That's where the real, that's where the real magic. You know, with Ric Flair and I, we make terrible tag team partners because we're both ring generals. So I want to start. No, I want to start. I want. But we make great combatants because Ric Flair is a ring general. He has his way of getting from A to Z. Okay, Z's a given. I am a ring general. I have my way of getting from A to Z. The magic is with putting us against each other. And no, you come my way, no, you come my way. How we get to Zed. And that's only learned by hours and hours in front of a crowd with the microscope on you. And that's one thing that's, well, that's, that's going to be a lost art soon, I think. I think. It'll be difficult to, to acquire. It's not a necessity right now. It's not a necessity? No, because there aren't enough guys that can do it. It's hard to, it's hard to cheat some of that. But... It's because the dynamics have changed and the um, yeah the, the involvement of the people that are producing the show is hit bigger and it's hard to go out in front of a large you know they they they, they work on it I think I, I haven't been around for a year but I think they work on it pretty consistently but believe it or not for the our fan for our guys to learn how to wrestle on, on WWE for our guys the best place for them to go out there and feel the crowd is in Europe because Europe re still responds. Every night, like old time wrestling here. I mean, we do big crowds here, but sometimes they're not into it. Sometimes they are. Over in Europe, where we, you know, they have a great system, and they're over there leaving next Tuesday for another ten-day run. Those crowds are so enthusiastic. It's like wrestling in Columbia, South Carolina, every night. Wouldn't that Charles? Be? Yeah. I mean, you just can't. Yeah. You just can't. You can't do anything wrong. But that's where you really learn psychology, man. You get confidence. Yeah. But, uh, but uh, you struck on something that, that piqued my interest. You were saying that, and, I, and I'm sorry if I'm not, I'm not saying this correctly, are you saying that the, the art that, that a guy has in terms of 
carrying the ball himself, so to speak, isn't as important because because the, the system has changed because you have the riders. No, it is. It is important, but you're not going to have the luxury of of having that guy. Only there's only three or four guys that can do it right now in the company. Well, isn't that a scary future if you think about it? If you don't have enough guys that can do that. Well, the problem is, is that they, they don't, they're not they don't, they're not required to do it. They market it different. If I, I tell you with the WWE how they change is the marquee would say in the day with this world champion Ric Flair versus Roddy Piper or Ric Flair versus many many many, and you would come because you knew that those commodities would would give you the entertainment and the and the athletic factor that you wanted. Now, there's, the, as, as time went along, they changed the marquee. They still made the matches the same. Who the main event was, was, was Hogan or whatever it was. But on the marquee, they just put the WWE. So they used our names. That was a smart business move. Used our names. So now it's the WWE that's drawing. And so the psychology, when we got in the ring, there's an old less old rule that probably not many know is those folks are already there. You're wrestling for next week. So everything you do there, you're wrestling for next week. Well, that, that's, a, that's gone now, that school of thought, because of pyrotechnics, of the WWE and the production that's being brought along. Although you still need the core talent and the fellas that Rick's talking about, it's not sold the same way anymore. <clears throat> Well, they don't go back to the towns, but twice a year. Yeah, that's not worth the town every week for a year. Just you know, I'll tell you another thing that is lost is going in the back in the territories. There are a lot of guys. Buddy Rose was one of them. Uh, that he got over in Portland, Oregon, and uh, Ole Anderson and Gene Anderson were the tag team champions. Gene Anderson had a heart attack. And Buddy Rose could have walked into being half the tag team champions back when Rick and I were working this. He was too scared to leave Portland because nobody knew him in Charlotte and he didn't know whether he'd get over. As opposed to a guy that went from territory to territory without the loan and kept getting over and over and over. You know, and that's what weeded out, that's what put the cream to the top and weeded out all the rest. But that's a, that's a, that was a good schooling system. Yeah, it's just different now because it's, but it's like, how can you argue with success? I mean, uh, the, the, the guys don't have to learn how to do all that. That's it. Yeah. They, they don't have to, and they really don't have the opportunity. I'm not talking about now, certainly, Taker, Sean, Hunter, um, you know, I think Randy to some some extent, um, Dave, maybe a little bit of edge can lead him that, but I mean, <laughs> but it's not about not leading the match. It's about having the time and the time, the years in, you know, to make those decisions. That's all I'm saying. It's not. A, it's not a knock on anybody. It just doesn't happen overnight. What What about the differences in like what you see in a locker room? Like a locker room. When you talked about talk about the locker room, the locker room was different back in your prime as it is today. It's, it seems like it doesn't have the personalities that. They probably had in its past, and now if a guy uh, asserts himself, you know, they he gets accused of being a bully, and and they might admonish him for it. And before it was just about being a locker room leader. Do do you see there's a whole change in the way wrestling is is run now? It's less on personnel, is more on the system. Um, I think things are on a pretty even keel right now. There's there've been a few guys I've seen that would have they wouldn't have survived. It. In the 70s and 80s, that they got killed. <laughs> and there was a whole bunch of guys in the WCW in the 90s that would have gotten killed. Yeah, I mean, no, just that was that was, but that was just chemistry, well, and that and that was the management. That was, that was the management letting it happen. You know, that's. But the, the WWE locker room has run. I think it's run very, very well. And I think that they keep it tight grip on it, and you know. No, that I had. I'm sorry, yeah. but I. I was at WrestleMania and I did a thing and my arm got caught and they had me back and they put me in a room and took an x-ray and had it develop, boom, that fast. Whew. It's not a bad working atmosphere there. Not bad at all. You know, that, that fast. No, I have no yeah, idea it's, they it's, 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 they, they have, it's they, not that they didn't have respect for the talent before, it's just now that it's just, it's more accepted, yeah. you know. 
we before we had respect for each other. Now the people in management have respect. I mean, it's right now. If someone wants time off, Vince goes, time off. I used to be worried about uh, you never miss it. Lose your spot. Yeah. Yeah, you lose your spot and. Never miss a gig. If you're advertised, never miss a gig. If you can walk, you can wrestle, all these cliches. But I can remember the change where Ben said, no, don't worry about it. Like when we were in Glasgow mm -hmm. and they found out uh, my back chips and cancer stuff. Uh, it wasn't a big thing. Well, it wasn't like, oh, Roddy's not here. Who are we going to replace him with? Oh, my goodness, the show will go on. Because, again, it's the WWE uh, that's in the forefront and the, then the the best talent that they have carries it. It's interesting you talked about how good of a care they, they took when you got your arm stuck to make sure everything was all right, because for years the talk was, you know, pro wrestlers need to unionize, we need to stick together for the benefits, and people really don't talk about that anymore. It seems like... Uh, because all the benefits are there. Yeah, the standard is, uh, yeah. the care cool. has been raised. Uh, yeah, that's one thing that you got to give credit where credit's to. They got masseurs, they got caterers, they got... I can't think of anything else to ask for <laughs> and I'm trying you know yeah. you know yeah. I'm Snoop Doggy and me are sitting down yeah. at nighttime trying to there's got to be another thing they could have in here but uh, they've done a great yeah, job they, they do a hell of a job they do a great job man just curious because and, and we had talked about it in our interview here I know you're you're good friends with Bret Hart it's like had you ever heard of the 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 controversy between Bret Hart and Rick and some of the the verbiage that they had back and forth? No, I'm aware that there's uh, some some uh, 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 communication problems there, but I'm not aware of exactly what they I are. I have a whole new level of information now that I spent the week with Diane Hart. Don't get me started on Brett. <laughs> <laughs> He's in a bad place. Yeah. Between uh, Diane and Ellie, they both can't be wrong. <laughs> so I've been spending the weekend with Diane, and I took her to dinner, as you know. Yeah. I have a whole, I have a lot less of a thought process about Bret Hart. Yeah. He's made some bad mistakes. Yeah. He'll be held accountable somewhere. Because he has no respect from any of his family members whatsoever. And that is I really did sad. That. I did hear that. Huh? I did hear that. It's sad. Yeah. Unless Diana Hart needs to be committed. After she, she depre I mean, I don't get depressed over anything. But talking to her about her relationship with Brett and the family and all the stuff that went down in between, gosh, it's really sad. And, and I, I it makes my family look like we are just like we're the Brady Bunch. <laughs> <laughs> and that's saying a lot. Sorry. Flair's <laughs> family. Yeah, gosh, I'm mean, just so sad. I feel bad for him. I do. I mean, to have that little respect within the family, you know, you know and to have that perception of everything that's good, it's just, it is sad. Speaking of sad, I, and I know that I saw how hard you took, you saw Bobby Heenan for the first time in oh a while. Oh, my God. Holy cow. That is the greatest example of every time we see something that, every time we think we have something wrong yeah. in our life personally, you look at you say, thank God, and you just say, geez, thank Rick, God for good health. Rick has so much compassion, and he's so, uh, so emotional. Uh, you know, I felt sorry yeah. for myself because I had no shoes till I saw a man that had no feet. I, I, when I, I, I was uh, in shock. Oh. I wanted to walk out there and go, Welcome back, Bobby, our brother. But I would have cracked. I couldn't oh, do it. Oh, man. Yeah. They would have they put the camera on him, and I would have died. Oh. And it wasn't about that. It was about steamboat now, but it could have been. Oh, Jesus. So I, I, I saw you were getting a little choked up when they went to the commercial. Is that what you were thinking about? You, you were. No, you were I was choked up because I've known, you know, steamboat so well, and so many people don't realize how good he was. I mean, he got retired in 86, right, or 87, what was it? And you're still right on the mark in 25. No, 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 80, no, 90, 92. 90. I'm sorry, whatever it was. Yeah, yeah, and I mean, those people have forgotten, and I am I was watching him hold Richie, and I was for all those matches, and and it's just emotional. I, mean, I really like him. You know, we've never, Ricky and I have never been best friends, but we've always had a lot of respect for each other. They sure drew a lot we, of money together. We're, yeah, we just were socially, but in terms of rock, in terms of getting in that squared circle, man, I'll put it up there against anything. He was he was really good. You know, what's really neat is, is how successful both of you have been in wrestling, but you've went about it in a different way. We were talking about this in the car. You, you went beyond <laughs> the call of duty and sometimes and being a company man and making sure other people were getting over, and, and you've always... You've always done your own thing. 
been a rebel, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, uh, but, but he was in a really rough environment. I wrote it in my book, you know. I mean, just you'll never convince me that Roddy wouldn't have been drawn as much money as Hogan as the champion. Yeah. You just won't, you won't, you'll never convince me because the machine, it was the machine with four or five pivotal guys, like just like now. But when Roddy was at his hottest, if they put the belt on Roddy, it wouldn't have hurt business. <laughs> just as an FYI, you know. But I'm not knocking Hogan either by saying that, because I, you know, I have, I have always respected Hogan sure. for what he's done in the business. Then, you know, I just I had a difficult time, which he acknowledged. We acknowledged with the way he treated me when I helped him get WCW. But it's not how he treated me as a person. It's how it's just business, and I wasn't used to that that style of business. So, yeah. no right. But Roddy, I mean, Roddy, Roddy was not afraid to say no. Vince said, "I need you to do it." Roddy said, "No." You know, I, I, just, I, I don't know what I wasn't there in that time frame. I don't know how I would have reacted. You know what I mean, but I, I know that when I said no for the first time with Petrick and those guys, it just <laughs> it became a nightmare for him. My whole life changed. It's a lot easier to say yes. Well, watch, watching Rick constantly do what, what they ask of him to do what what do you think about something like that when you when you saw you know Rick basically you know losing to everybody that he should have been losing to and not being treated the way you know Rick deserved to be treated uh, a lot of that time you weren't even in wrestling but you must have you must have followed it to some extent well I think the Ric Flair was uh, gave a huge opportunity and made a lot of people a huge amount of money by while the WWE was starting out and going, he, every night going an hour with Sting and kept the WCW going to the point where all of a sudden it blew up and allowed all the rest of us. They got to remember who kept that territory going. Um, they didn't. <laughs> this, this is the guy, uh, you know. There's a lot of ways that in, in our business that do, uh, things, we all have our strong points that we give. Uh, Rick getting beaten every night is a credit to his talent. Like we come from two different, you know, two different worlds. I think that's why we get along so well, is I, I don't wear a robe, my hair's not blonde, he don't wear a kilt, you know, and, uh, you know, well, he drinks. But. No, no, but, but, but Roddy, yeah. Roddy, I mean, don't miss, this is a misconception. When Roddy and when I were together with Ed Crockett and that, but it was never a business issue with Roddy. Roddy walked into that jungle that was going on with Orndorff and Hogan and that mix of people right there and Rude and whoever all, I can't remember all the components were, but you know, everybody wanted that spot. Orndorff was, was equally as hard to do business with. Dave Schultz. Uh, oh, Dave, yeah, Dave Schultz, all those guys. And, and the thing of it is that, 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 that what bothered me in that equation is that you can't compare the level of talent and Roddy Piper and Paul Orndorff or Roddy Piper and David Schultz or Roddy Piper and, you know, clearly the baby face or the good guy, I hate using words like that on camera, but the good guy, the mecha good guy was Hogan. The mecha bad guy, the catalyst that drove, you know, the cows was Roddy Piper. Everybody else was scrambled underneath, but a lot of guys think that they're better and, you know, that's, that creates controversy for me. I never went to the ring one time in my whole life thinking, well, maybe I would the last 10 years, but ever thinking that anybody behind me should be after me. <laughs> I never thought like that. I just didn't think. I just knew when I got in the ring that I could perform at any level. You know, that's where Roddy went up there. Well, Roddy wasn't going to take a back seat. Why would he? You know, they, it, and, and trust me, they would have fired Roddy if he wasn't earning the paycheck. You know what I mean? If Roddy had rolled back down to us, and after a couple of years up there, the whole thing might be turned around the other way. You know what I'm saying? Yep. It, the whole, I mean, Vince didn't keep Roddy around because they were like best friends. He kept him around because Roddy drew a lot of money. Yeah, Piper's pit was still, what, what's more legendary now? I mean, I, think about some of those great things. I mean, you just think about the business and think, I can, I can only name three or four guys in the same, in the same hand, same thought process as Roddy. I'm not saying anything wrong. I mean, I'm not. I mean, you you tell me. No, you're right. I, I, it's the truth. It is what it is. You know, Roddy Piper, and he, and he left early. Just think if he rolled it out another ten years. I mean, he's still rolling around on a reputation that he hasn't really participated in, except on a really inconsistent basis for fifteen years. 
More than that. When, when, did, you, when did you go to acting full time? 88. 88, so there you go. 20 years. I mean, do you see what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, he's, he's got a lot of mileage out of being out of here 20 years, right? <laughs> he must have done something right. And, Roddy, maybe you're more equipped to, to answer this because you've been in, in the acting a uh, little longer than, than Rick has, but... How, why is it so difficult for wrestlers to get get into successful acting careers? In the very beginning, uh, the because stigma, they can't act. Because they, yeah, you know what? Rest Some of them think they can because they're on TV. They can't. Rest, it couldn't be wrong, more <laughs> wrong. They used to <laughs> say it's true. No, you know what? It's couldn't be more wrong. They used to say, you know, all those wrestlers are actors until I did a movie. And one of the reviews says, "If you ever thought a wrestler was an actor, watch this. The hell comes from outcome. But in any case, wrestling is explosion. Acting is implosion. And until you find that equation out, it's really hard to make the crossover. And That's why I'm dying out there. <laughs> I know nothing about anything except explosion. <laughs> You're not going to start imploding 60 years later. Yeah, yeah. Well, Won't just, be good for here. They just need to turn the camera on you, brother. <laughs> but that's what, you know, and Hollywood has a st had a real strong stigma against wrestlers coming over the actual talent themselves, uh, especially back in 1988. It was, they live was extremely difficult to make. Unbelievable amount of drama. Unbelievable. Just a, a current topic that I wanted to ask you about, and again, Roddy, you'll probably know this being you have a son that's actively involved in MMA. Uh, do, you, do you ever foresee MMA basically replacing pro wrestling on, on, on no, Rick saying, but even before Not I get the question. Close. I've already, I've already answered that question. Matt Doug was showing wrestling will never die. You no. can't, the thing of it is you can't name, th na name three, guys, name three stars in mixed martial arts. You want me to name them? Yeah. Uh, Quentin Jackson, Tito Ortiz. Tito That's Ortiz, two. he's not a main event guy anymore, is he? Not anymore, no. Yeah, but it's Quentin three, Jackson. I'm talking about guys that are drawing anymore. Two. <laughs> yeah. Three. Yeah. No, but I mean, it, right now, it, oh, like, the it, Shamrock. It, it's Rock. No, Sham it's but Shamrock is done. I mean, no, I know, I know. It, it's a short lived way of making a life, and the marquee guys come and go. I mean, Brock Lesnar and this mirror thing is huge, but I just disagree with the, the fact that they never get their. Like, the guy that they finally got over, you know, I talk about it's the guy with the Mohawk. They finally got him over. Liddell. And the cover of Men's Health, the cover of Muscular Fitness, and all of a sudden he's gone. I mean, I know he's come back around, but it's hard. You know, they don't put they don't put five years on John Cena to see John Cena take off. But I mean, and Hunter and Dave, and there's just more longevity, and they're they're able to establish their personalities in wrestling. I yeah. mean, you don't only catch a few of those guys. I mean, you know, what, the what, what sells that is the violence. Yeah, not you the can't, personality. You can't get into the individual and become a fan and root for the individual because they're sh as Rick is saying that you're wearing wrestling you can start to feel you learn about that guy or that lady and you can start to feel that MMA is the part it's strictly for the violent what do you think wrestling and MMA can learn from each other well they're gonna they're trying to pick up on how to market these guys it, it does a good job I tell you the, the, the interviews between Ortiz and Frank and the, and the Ken Shamrock were great I'm yeah. watching this going. They're getting it. They're, Ortiz take, can they're talk. taking it. Uh, He's a colorful guy. Marble. And and yeah, and I mean, that, but I mean, that's what took. I mean, that wasn't supposed to be like the most marquee fight in the world, but it did real well. But they had a series of promos built up. Those, the Las Vegas. Uh, yeah. The uh, Kimbo Slice, yeah, same thing. Yeah, yeah. You know, look at the heights that they yeah. did, and uh, they, they're yeah. taking a page out of uh, our book. Uh, you know, you got guys coming out in MMA now with sunglasses, and they got their music in, and they got names. Uh, you yeah. know, they're, they're I, I, another thing too that it, that hurts it is because if you, we have a real hard time with advertisers in our business, right? There's no way that yeah. Coca-Cola and AT&T and Sprint yes. and Verizon, the people that Vince is trying to track down, are ever going to sponsor MMA. You don't think so? Well, I, well, if they do, it's contrary to what. Uh, what we're learning through WWE, I mean, they don't want the violence. People don't, those problems, they don't want their children. There's so much violence right now in our world and reality shows and stuff. The networks are, are looking for for a contemporary, uh, what was that, Little House on the Prairie, 
They are. They're looking for something family orientated. The United States is being the family, the social structure is being torn down right now. Hell, we can't. We we got it. We got it. We don't think wrestling's going to fill that void, do you? We have navy. Oh, we have navy man. ships surrounding a carrier right now, where, where a pirate, a pirate, six pirates have taken a captain. Right. Yeah. We can't even go get them. You know, and do do I do think, you realize that? think about that? We that? can't go on and take that guy away from for six pirates. Does does not and we got the USS Mississippi standing there with three thousand soldiers on it? Huh. Does not Our hands are tied at every juncture of life. Don't get me going to politics. <laughs> the, but it's true. Yeah, and wrestling is if you take a look at it, it's a reflection of how society is feeling. And all the things MMA is a reflection of how the society is feeling. You've got all these gangs, I mean these it's MS, it doesn't matter, the names of these gangs shooting and killing. You got people losing their houses. They're mean. And they're watching mean hey. stuff and the network in the country with Obama, whether you like it or not, they're trying to bring us around again. Hey, let me just tell you something. I'm 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 say this and I'm pretty certain of what I'm saying. You're smirking at me. I think I'm gonna slap you. No, no, no. <laughs> Steve Austin, the internet, right? Do you think if Steve Character came along right now, he could be doing this on our show? No, not now. No chance. No chance. And that was a big part. Well, you talked about the the trouble that with, when you and Jericho two weeks ago. Yeah. The trouble. The trouble. Yeah, that, but that, 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 that's whole different. Thing. This, that where where he would go to Vince. I mean, that, the whole world. Who didn't want to flip off? The, the thing was, who doesn't want to flip off their boss, right? That ain't happening right now. Just don't really give him by the finger. You don't see that, or when I used to this deal right here, that that ain't flying either. Paint yourself half yeah. black. Yeah. Don't think that'd yeah. fly, huh? Yeah. yeah. I just want to briefly ask you about this. You guys tagged together in 06, and, and, and we never got to talk about you and Roddy teaming together in 06. Uh, the last time you guys performed as a tag team for, for Vince. Just any memories you have of, uh, of the two of you working together then? For me, you know, it was like, at that time in my life, I was a real dark period of time in my life. And at that period of my life, too, for Rick and I to be the tag team champions for the short time that it was. It was one of the, a big time emotional highlight for my career. Uh, I love Rick so much, you know, and I'm just probably his biggest competitor as far, you know, I get right in there, but, you know, to tag up. Uh, Why would you lie like this? Do well, you know, do you know what happened? You told me, no, no, no. I'll give no, no, you the no, money no, back. No, 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 oh. no. Do you know what happened, right? What? They, we get the TV and they say, we're going to make you guys champions. And Roddy goes, okay. They said, but Roddy, you're leaving for Europe with Fleur tomorrow. You guys are going to defend the titles over here for 10 days. Roddy said, well, I have only packed for one day. They said, well, geez, you know, figure it out, Roddy. So Roddy goes, so I got to go with Flair for 10 days overseas. No advance warning, no clothes. This title means nothing to me. Keep it. And that's a true story. Five days in, he had kidney stones. <laughs> that's the real story. He goes, God, I think it's really cool when the championship is up. I had no idea I was going to go <laughs> go in a row for 10 days. <laughs> what? what, what, yeah. what what, what you, is, gotta do little, you gotta do a lot of like flushing of the body, you know, yeah. a lot of prep, you know. And no, uh, I think they told me the last minute that the fact they had no idea. They said, they said they're going for weeks or more, so I just threw it back together. <laughs> but we, we had no idea we were winning them, right? No. Nah. But he goes, I'm it going. Was a Cyber Sunday. To ten, ten days away. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know, you got like, you know, uh, all here in Charlotte, too, was really yeah. the pretty When we were making ground. TV on the East Coast, he oh. just moved into a hotel in the city. It's a neutral site and just stays and doesn't yeah. even bother going back to Portland. He's yeah. working around the hotel. <laughs> <laughs> that guy, yeah, the Takasiji days in, they tell me he's a, a rough area. <laughs> Not the Ray Stevens there. there. there and his <laughs> pit bull, I'm sure I would. No Willie Nelson. And, holy yeah. cow. Holy cow. We had Dirk and Waldorf. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that was the place in the land. Good one. That was that special. Bobby Apple he didn't call the place in the land of the, where all the guys stayed. The we had Zirk and Waldorf. <laughs> 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 How funny was Bobby, huh? Oh, oh my God. Oof, oof. Hey, were you surprised at all about the reaction Steamboat got in his match that, that you guys had wrestling? Mm, not in the least. Not in the least. I told him, I said, you know, because I, 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 I get frustrated when sometimes he doesn't want to do things. I, and I did before when we worked a lot. You know, he, doesn't, he always wants to do something that he doesn't want to feature himself. He never has. I mean, but when he gets going, he's, you know, 
I said, the first thing we need to do is jump off a top rope after he, after he catches snooker, start out something like this, you know, instead of coming in and starting the match all over again, and then do the arm drags, man, and the place will come done. I wish I was wondering. Is Mark, the arm drags are marquee for anybody in the business of forever. Just he and Jack Briscoe could arm drag like that. I know that uh, the way they do now is they micromanage a lot of these matches and they have an agent assigned, but mm. what can you possibly do when you've got, you know, Ric Flair, Roddy Piper, and Ricky Steamboat are all involved in a match? Who, who can well, micromanage you? It's very rarely that we'd ever get, we don't, because we don't talk up. You know, I, I, I don't like to think for them because when I think, I get myself in trouble. <laughs> you know, I mean, I, it just is. I mean, it's, I'm not, I think I know a lot about the business, probably more than a lot of the people that I have to, you know, be scrutinized by, but I'm not going to, it doesn't work. Because I'm, you know, whatever the thought process is, but I do know how to, I do know how to produce Ricky Steamboat, Roddy Piper, and Jimmy Snuka, because I've worked 5,000 times with three of them. <laughs> and that's the way it is. And it's, it's just, you know, it's just, for, the simple, formula was simple, offense, 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 the heat and go home, you know, and it, it worked out good. Yeah, yeah, it did. And, and how, how much advanced knowledge did you have of that drop kick? That's what I want to know. <laughs> oh, that was that was I pulled that out of my ear. You know, I, I had said the, the day before because it was WrestleMania 25. Doesn't matter what was hurting on me, I was just gonna go for it. Just you know, and it was just, you know, my heart was there. I, I, I'm not gonna let my career end quite there, <laughs> but um, it wasn't about that. It was about all these guys that individually had made their way into our industry uh, to the highest rank, that's this uh, 33rd degree Mason. And it was more, of, it was about nostalgia. It wasn't about whether I got the drive. It was that, yeah, you well, he tried. He tried, you know, uh, it's one thing, and even Vince McMahon said, you know, more balls and brains. You know, and I'm a really smart guy. <laughs> oh, back to the kilt. <laughs> Hot rod. <laughs> How much rod can you? Yeah, four o'clock in the morning. <laughs> hey, woo, 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 woo. Tell her, tell her. How much rod can you handle? Uh, Kitty, my, my wife, I think it's for you. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> uh, just bleep that one word there. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to stay in touch with you. I love you, man. I'd like to stay in touch. Yeah, I, I forget you. about the time change. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Keep I've lived by the theory that only your friends call you late at night. That's I've lived right. for 30 years, I felt like that. <laughs> Just tell my dad the same thing. My dad would say, where are you? I'd go, I'm not really sure. Let me think about it for a minute. <laughs> Please, I don't need to hear from you at 1 a.m. in the morning. <laughs> Check with me at 8, okay? Hope you have a good night. Good night, son. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> As much as this business has changed since since you started it, is it really come down to how important uh, the interview is to, to wrestling? I mean, doesn't that what ultimately sells tickets even today? It's non-existent now. We don't do that yeah. anymore. But, no market but, specs, but, but a good interview today still sells a ticket. It, well, it, the, I don't know if it sells allowed. tickets because it, it, it's condensed to the body of a show and there's not market specs anymore where they'll say New York Saturday night or Philadelphia, and that's and that, once again, was because the cities ran more. Even in the 80s, when those guys were running the machine up there, they ran Philly once a month. Now they run Philly three times a year. They ran New York once a month. They ran Boston once a month. I mean, they had their, they had their regular towns. Now it's Philadelphia three times a year, the Garden four times a year, if that, three times, I mean. Yeah. So the, 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 when, when they lost Rock and lost Austin, they lost a lot of interview power. You know, and think about it, two guys like that that could really talk you know, for an extended period of time and had a really phenomenal relationship with the crowd, like he did when he was there, like Hogan had a good, you know, good spiel. You know, Hulks was always the same verbiage, but the crowd bought it. Roddy came up with the creativity and, you know, Roddy put together all his verbiage. And, but there's only a few guys up there that can talk like that now. That's just the way it is, it's different. And I know you get asked this all the time by the younger guys you meet, and they ask for you for advice or pointers, or, you know, they say, watch my match, watch this, what'd you think? When people ask, like, wh what can I do to improve my interviews, what do you tell them? Well, I tell them, because I got asked that a couple times last night, a couple of, that Nigel McGinnis kid with Ring of Honor, and that's got a pretty good interview, he does, you know. I just, they got to remember, Jack Mulligan told me, and I told this story a couple of times, when you're on TV, you know, like in the old days, you might have three or four or five minutes to distinguish yourself from everybody else on the card. You want them to walk away. But, and so when you're making your interview, that's, what you're doing or wrestling, whatever, 
the interview has to be something original, something that catches their attention, whether it's through the energy, whether it's through the content. I mean, it's, it's, it's A or B. It's content, energy, and delivery. Three. Three things. And we were, we were unique in that how, regard. How many interviews every Tuesday in Raleigh do you think we did before, or rather in Charlotte, do you think we did before we'd head off for Raleigh? 30 apiece. Maybe 30 apiece. Yeah. And you'd have the same town for three weeks, so uh, you would do three completely different interviews for the same town. The same town. You know, um, all at the same time. Uh, but, uh, you know, uh, one, if you wanted to keep it just real simple, uh, give them a good beginning, a great ending, and keep it contemporary in the middle. Entertain them. Do you, do you think the way that they, uh, con say, I guess, control things now with the writers and, and the time slots that they have, like you only have this much time, do, do you think the, the interview... Uh, is, is still a big part of wrestling, or could be a big part of wrestling, or do you think they've taken it away for, from the performers? No, I think it's a big part of wrestling, but I it don't. It drives the storyline. It drives the storylines. I mean, the guys are still. I'm not implying the guys don't do good interviews. I'm just saying it's not like it was. You know, I mean, you don't see guys getting to go out there 15 minutes like Rock. And when Rock was talking, Vince didn't didn't watch the stopwatch. You know what I mean, he knew it was getting a rating. And, and they, uh, the same thing with. Uh, I, th I think they thought Mick Foley was a pretty good talker, right? I mean, and let Mick and him talk, and I mean, ratings reflected in it, but then it's Steve. A, it's a completely different way, style of interview that, uh, that, you know, when you have pyrotechnics or, yeah, enough, you know, Stone Cold, I don't know Stone Cold that well. He's always been very nice to me. But I wish that I could have come in in a big foot truck squishing a bunch of things with pyrotechnics, you know, and knocking the boss out. And back in, in the day of the interview, you, what you said, you must be sure to back up in that market, whatever you said. And uh, so Rickus would come down. There wouldn't be any music. Back in the day, there was no music. I never even know. I played the bag, unless I played the bagpipe. And that style of what you're talking about it was, is, was a pure, very layered, you know, even sexual, if you take your coat off, you know, you're doing an interview and you take your coat off that like that, that's a heavy sexual connotation that you put, rhythm, the rhythm that you have. When you want somebody to know something, you start talking to them with the beat of the heart, and when you want them to hear you, you stop. Tonight, we're wrestling, and then you stop. So there's all kinds of ways, uh, layers to an interview, that will never be brought uh, again because the interview now is a written story to connect the dots so you can you the audience can understand that other way is other than a few of the old timers uh, and then of course the great Ric Flair who's not an old timer Casey back at me. I, don't, I think I'm the oldest timer unfortunately it's hard to believe you the oldest timer I'm older than all you guys I'm catching up with you, you guys are crazy not, not in the bar you're not no, <laughs> nor in the ring. You you touched on it. What what do you uh you you've had some experience with uh, we'll, we'll we'll call it the, the the minor league system if you will. Uh, I'm not sure it's a fair way to just it's just not WWE level production and stuff. You had some time in TNA and you just started with Ring of Honor. What's your perception of that? Were you were Come, TNA. Yeah, you did some TNA. No, and I got fired uh, the third time. <laughs> Uh, I went to TNA, and I did. Here's something interesting with this, you know. You went, I didn't know. You know no, yeah, what well, year, I'll tell you what I did. Um, shoot. Well, it, I got inducted in 205, and I got, it was after that HBO thing. Uh, so it was probably 204, maybe. Uh, and then when I came back was WrestleMania 19. Yeah. So it was about the year before WrestleMania 19. Um, How long has TNA been around, though? Seven, seven, eight years? Seven? But you're talking about interviews. I just want you know, I went on TNA because Vince and I had a problem. And so what I said on TNA was something like, I'm not crazy, I'm just a little unwell right now. I know you can't tell, but stick around, baby, and you'll see a whole different side of me. But I, I, and then everybody went, hey, he's rambling, and what is he doing? No, no, you didn't listen. Because I was sick, literally. And it was my way of, so I could come back at this moment and tell you, that was all part of a system. When the writing of my book, they took 60,000 pages out. 
But the part of the system of my book was Hogan, you got you know, I gotta fight fire with fire, was well who did start WrestleMania was was putting the ground laying the ground rules down. It wasn't so much about Roddy Piper. When the, that interview that I did I'm, you know, I'm not crazy, I'm just a little unwell right now. Now it makes a whole lot of sense that I cured cancer and my backbone's out and made WrestleMania 25. Well, that's a, that's a line that I take my fans on. And they're quick to criticize, but now if you all look back, it made complete sense. And then I was out of TNA. That was my only purpose for TNA, to, to make them know that I ain't finished. So you just one day, one shot? No, I was, I maybe did, I'm not sure, like five shots, yeah. but in the day just after wrestling I wrestling or five, interviewing? Pardon me, sir? Wrestling or just interviewing? Oh, I know what I did. I, um, uh, was uh, the big, the small, best, best sports show, what's that called? Best damn sports show. Best damn sports show. I did a thing with the best damn sports show guys come on, and they were all great guys, yeah. football players, except for this one geek, Chris, who had wrestling his fake on. And, Chris and, Myers. Yeah, and I got in the ring, you know, and the guy, he thought, I don't know, he thought he was a tough guy. He come up to here, so <clears throat> I bit his nose. <laughs> <laughs> Back off, Papa. Everybody out of the pool, you know. All the football players, they got out. Here's, I got this more. Oh, I got a moron. <laughs> Mormon? Oh, no, no, not Mormon. Moron. <laughs> uh, that was on TNA? Yeah, 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 and that was on TNA. So that, but then they gave me a fire extinguisher. <laughs> and you know what? Who's the guy that, that was buried to Roseanne Barr? Uh, that's Arnold? on that show. Tom Arnold, he's on the show. Tom Arnold. Do Tom Arnold, yeah. <laughs> he comes back. The whole audience <laughs> gave me this thing, right, with that kid that tried to kill me, fair play. Boom, and I'm squirting the hell out of this guy. I tried to bite his nose off. And the guy comes back and says, I haven't had that much smoke since I was doing crack. <laughs> 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 and everybody's like, oh, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a damn piper, damn piper. It. Well, you gave me the damn fire extinguisher. I love it. You know, at least the one it. in Trump Plaza that had half the stuff out. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> he is absolutely the best. I love you too. But but those types of things are what's left of what you call our ter what compared to what used to be the territory system. A lot the up and comers, the guys that are, you know, on their way up and sometimes on their way down. Uh, and I know that you did Ring of Honor only after you you basically. I don't want to say got permission from Vince, but but you let him know that it was something you were looking to do. You didn't want to burn any bridges. Uh well, I did it recently. I just did that a long time ago. I mean, but I mean, I, I think of it is. I mean, it's um, if I respect the people that I'm working for and why they respect me, and they don't do anything to hurt the wrestling business in any way, shape, or form. You know, it's it's you know, it's. It, I think it's all doable. I mean, it's. Um, I understand why I can't wrestle anymore. But that's you asked me that question earlier. Uh -huh. I don't totally get that because I can still wrestle, but I do get it. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. But I'm not going to wrestle. I mean, I had a just the most fabulous retirement in the world, and all that. But if somebody it wants, is, if somebody wants to pay me, you know, to help help give them a little bit of a rub from what I've been fortunate enough, and they don't do anything that I don't like in terms of you know, then I'm really protective of our business, and I'm very protective of who I am. If I lend my name to something, I have to feel very comfortable, as you know, and these guys are very respectful. And Mark Cuban, who I've met several times, is a real good guy. And Mark's got a vision, you know, and I don't, they're never, they're, they're, their goal is to never compete with WWE. Right. Never. They just want to make a television show and have another vehicle for wrestling. Isn't it amazing how much wrestling's changed, though? It used to be a lot, when you were, it was a live show, and the pay-per-views were special. Yeah. And now it's not, it's, it's a, it was from a TV product. Now it's yeah. almost an internet product. Yeah. It's things that are created specifically now for the internet. R Ring of Honor is just not, not, not changing stuff. Ring of Honor's uh, production value is, from what I saw last night, are better than TNA. You know, they got, I, I haven't seen it's in high definition. I mean, yeah. it, it is what it is. I mean, it's unique. And it's going to get better. I mean, I was with one of the guys, that, one of Cuban's top guys last night. It's going to get better. You know, they're are you gonna, talking about Mark Cuban, the HD network guy. Yeah. Yeah. Did they, they, yeah. they started their start right? show last night? Ring of Honor. They started producing show last night. Mark's behind that? Yeah, yeah. and I'm, I'm, they made me the, the ambassador that. of the company. I'll be doggone. Yeah. But I mean. Made off. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing. Sometimes I just do them for Rod. You know? 
one of the final things I wanted to ask you about is, is what do you think now of the the vast coverage that the internet gives wrestling and, and how open things are, the rumors, you, everybody's dirty laundry, it's up there five minutes later? I hate it. I hate it. Uh, I, myself, I, I disagree. I despise it. <laughs> you disagree? Oh, uh, yeah. It. I could give you, you know what? I'll give you an example right now, whoever the geek is. They did a thing on Slam, uh, Slam something, whatever it is. And they were going over worst WrestleMania moments. And they brought up uh, myself against Goldust in the back alley block, uh, lot. And I, they, the guy calls himself smart. This whole thing, I, you know, they have no respect. And they don't know what to talk about. And I'll show you, just as simple. So they're talking about, oh, yeah, it was, it was so stupid. Uh, Goldust had a Cadillac. Piper had a bat, so he busts the windows. Yeah, and Piper busted his hand. It was it was a brutal match, but then Piper pulls out a water hose and squirts, you know, and then here comes a car and hits Roddy, and then it says some parenthesis, you know, it, in comes Stuntman, and boom, and, you know, and I'll let you know right now, like, if you guys can fit, put it together, what, what morons these people are is, first of all, there was no Stuntman. <laughs> that was Roddy. You know, sometimes cigars just go. So, so not only that, you moron. And he says it was shot in a back alley. Now, you can look at this right now. No, you moron. It was shot at the Disney lot. <laughs> and he said that Piper with a water hose. How stupid. Well, you moron. It was actually shot three days before the event. And in thinking about it, I came out and said, wait a second. What if it rains? There'll be no continuity. So we needed water hose. So you see, you moron, you don't know anything. <laughs> and, it, you know, you have, and this guy's coming to us, and they want us to call them journalists. But they, they ruin people's reputations. I'll tell you what, the same kind of way, and, and not getting off topic, but with my, uh, Michael Phelps, you know, with this thing with the pot. One of the great, it's a privilege to be by that man, that Olympian. Eight gold medals, one of the best in, in history. And somebody puts a picture up that and, and screw that. But you know what? Let's put that guy's picture up, too. You know, because you just, for whatever you sold your, this pure guy out for, you know, um, and what he's suffering as you, like the little sniveling under the cockroach carpet, as are these dirt sheet writers. The same way what they say about you. Uh, and to give them any credit, uh, or any more extra attention like I am is wrong because it makes them breed in their own little stuffy places. But they're like the person that took the picture of Michael Phelps. I mean, come on. You tarnished a man that has accomplished all that, you piece of garbage. And I believe in the United States of America, you have the right to face your accuser. Put that guy's picture up and see what all of America does with them, Phelps, too. Well, if that was yeah. true, they would have put the face of the chick that jumped on Kobe Bryant in Denver. Put her up. Still never seen her. You know what? Uh, so, uh, come on. About that? I was I was thinking about Kobe when he was talking about Michael Phelps. I'm, but I'm just saying that the, the accuser. I've never seen a picture of the accuser. Have you? Put the accuser up there. The you know, I, you know, you got uh, the, this internet thing. Everybody's real tough. <laughs> you know, they're five thousand miles away, uh, and everybody's got an opinion, and they pretend they can be whoever they want to be. But you know, the real guys, you're looking at them. Because we show up, you know, because they don't, otherwise they could talk about themselves. <laughs> but they can't do anything, so they have to talk about us. I think it's called impotency. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, there's a lot of cross-dressing and it's messed up their mind. <laughs> I could go on for days about that, but I'll just shut up. It is sad. It's really sad. It really is, man. I think I think the thing with Colby was even worse, so. You know, oh. I, I mean, you know, it's not even taking a side. But let's just, let's just, let's just put it like it is. A girl running the concierge stand. The concierge. We're not talking about the janitor. The concierge, front desk, you know. <laughs> Whose job point. is? Yeah, you know, is upstairs in his room, on her own call. You gotta be kidding me. Worst. That's the, that may be the worst blackmail job I've ever seen in my life. And yeah, with that, Kobe Bryant's a good guy. You know? And with Michael Phelps, he's just. You know what? He, this is. And, and I had a guy tell me this. I had a similar incident. But those people, his friends, betrayed him. And these dirt sheet writers, they betray us. We go out there and give everything we have, and they sit back and try to be clever 
and try, you know, the, and virtual reality wrestle, virtual reality write, pretending they're journalists. I, I don't have a lot of respect for any of them. I can't think of one I do. Sure, am I pulling punches too much? No, <laughs> no, 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 but I'm yeah. saying it, it's funny. I, mean, I, 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 I got one more. I, 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 one I can't more. try to get Peter on. I don't know. Yeah, I don't I got just one more, just one more, and, I, and I'll make it real quick. Is there's a fellow on the West Coast, and he's one of the, one of the original dirt sheet writers. Uh, I have this on film, and you know, you wonder where a guy's heart comes from. And they're going to a funeral in San Francisco, it's a funeral of a close friend that died. And they're walking down the street, and as they walk down the street, they're summer, all of a sudden they see there's cameras there. And you know what? All of a sudden they start telling each other jokes and smiling because they're on camera. You know what? They forgot why they're there. They weren't there for the funeral. They're there to be seen for their own. Just like Rick earlier was talking about Chris Benoit, our brother, and everybody jumps on TV. It's the same scum cockroach I'm finished I can't turn a computer on. <laughs> nah. You're, you're probably going to be a happier person. Than yeah, that. I mean, I, but I don't care. I mean, and I, I have figured out finally where they're going to tell me about me. My life's an open book anyway. I mean, I'm it, getting it, tired it, of them saying I'm drunk all the time. I never drank. Well, a couple times. <laughs> you know, but I was never one to drink. Who said you're drunk all the time? Do you know what, man? I did the Jimmy Kimmel show. They always keep saying, oh, you can oh, he's drunk. I never drink before I work. Well, a couple times. But I really don't. I never I've never, I never, off, I never heard of what you drunk. What you? <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> it's true. It pissed me off so much. I, I hate drinking before. I have before. Because he was there. But that's how I know I hate it. And maybe 25 times out of 7,000. And they... <laughs> you asshole. <laughs> and it pissed me off. Who said you were drunk? <laughs> One of them fucking dirt sheet writers, man. <laughs> saying, and, oh, no, I know, on YouTube. Why do you pay On YouTube, wait, 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 on YouTube. You uh -huh. look it up in Kimmel, and those guys that give opinions, oh, boy, he's wasted. I'm sober as a judge from South Carolina. <laughs> no, I was, <laughs> nah, I, I fucking that, hate that. That's funny. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> you know I don't drink before I go in the ring. That you're not helping. You're on the the witness. <laughs> Jimmy Kimmel is not the ring. <laughs> Listen, you're not supposed to be that smart. I know, I get okay, it. you're, you're on making, my side. No, it's true. I wasn't. Gentlemen, thank you so much for this time. I know we're, we're pressed here. We're gonna get get started for tonight's show, but it was an absolute honor to spend this time with you. Thank and you. I'm still in awe of every time I talk to each other. Thanks. So, we love thanks you, Mike. Again. Thanks, man. Yeah. Good deal. Why just keep us over for the weekend? <laughs> <laughs> I just stay at the hotel with them instead of going home. There you go. I've got restraints at home. <laughs> you got restraints. <laughs>